Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ms. Advocate Minnie Matthew is a professional with 19 years of experience in litigation, mediation, negotiations, opinion writing, teaching, and legal aid. She has a master's in social welfare with a distinction in field work from Nirmala Niketan College of Social Work and is a law graduate from the Government Law College. Ms. Matthew is an advocate at the Bombay High Court in various branches and practices various branches of law such as civil law, family law, consumer law, property, patent laws, company law, trademarks, industrial law, matrimonial law and domestic violence, PILs, etc. Ms. Matthew has also taught at KC Law College and Government Law College in the past. She was awarded the MacArthur Fund uh, for Leadership Development in the year 2002. She has provided legal aid in areas such as cruelty to animals, maintaining open spaces, rights of unorganized workers, domestic workers, women and children. She has worked with Watato Nasharia, an, an African network for prevention of child abuse and neglect at Nairobi. Uh, before I start, uh, when we are talking about sexual harassment of women at the workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act of 2013, when I am talking about women at the workplace, I am going to talk about all women at the workplace. This means not just women who are here, who are uh, sitting in organized workplaces, but I will also be talking about the 93% of the work workforce, which is essentially unorganized. So when we are talking about women at the workplace, we don't just mean urban English speaking women, we are talking about women, all working women, which means it is the construction worker, it is the BD worker, it is the woman in a BPO, it is a lawyer, it is a teacher, it is a student, all, all women. So when we understand the act, Please understand that, you're, that the act is going to cover a whole wide range of diverse people, different class backgrounds, caste backgrounds, rural areas, urban areas, small towns and there are workplaces everywhere and women are working everywhere. So, and. I also want to remind you when you when you hear this act and uh, all the fears that are going to come up or I am given to understand that there are several fears, I just want to go back to Bhavri Devi and her experience in 1992 because it is because of this act that the Visha, because of this lady that we had the Vishaka guidelines and now the act. And remember that this lady still hasn't got justice. So the 1992 rape has got unpunished yet. And I also want to quote what the judge said because you have to understand how all these things play out when we talk about the act. This was the shocking, this was a line from the shocking verdict. Bharati Sanskriti abhi itni nahi giri hai ki usme pale huye bola bhala vyakti is prakar se durachari ban jaye ki uske andar ayu jati ka bhed hi nahi rahe aur wo is prakar se kisi aurat ke upar toot pade. So when we are talking, I am putting it in a context. She was an unorganized worker. So when we talk about women, I am talking about all women. And I need you to understand uh, how this act will play out. Now, before I go on, what is sexual harassment? It includes any of the following. The first is that it will be unwelcome behavior. It's act or behavior of a sexual nature which is unwelcome. So right at the beginning, I'm telling you it's not about mutual consensual relationships. So let's not go into friendly banter, uh, relationships in the office, uh, when men and women chit chatting with each other or all those fears about, oh, now men and women cannot talk to each other. We are not talking about that. So these are bogies that are created. Sexual, ha we, are, we, are, we are getting down to specifics. We are not talking about mutual, consensual relationships between adults. Okay? We are talking about unwelcome acts of behavior. Unwelcome to whom? Unwelcome to the woman in the workplace. 
so it does not apply generally to every unwelcome behavior unwelcome sexual behavior which she feels is un unwelcome okay directly or by implication directly or by implication so that can be physical contacts advances demand or request for sexual favors sexually colored remarks showing pornography any other unwelcome physical verbal non verbal conduct of a sexual nature so we are not talking about men and women chit chatting so that because th those are all the questions that come up so i need this so that you you uh, realize that this is what the act is going to cover now who who does it cover who does this act cover it covers it covers the aggrieved woman in relationship to a workplace it is woman of any age whether employed or no so remember it can be a woman who is going into the workplace but she may be employed or no which means right from the definition there are women who may go into educational institutions there are women who may go into hospitals there are women who may go into other workplaces so you may be going into somebody else's workplaces too so it covers any aggrieved woman in relationship to a dwelling or a house for the first time what we have is you're covering all women at the workplace which means even the domestic worker who comes into your residence to work is also covered so it's all working women whether you work in a multinational or whether you are working as a domestic worker all women are covered and the employer is it could be state government it could be central government it could be the private sector it could be all employers all employers are covered under this and anybody who is res the responsible person is anybody who is managing supervising and controlling the workplace anybody who is a householder or is benefiting from the job of the householder now the workplace is any department organization undertaking cooperative society private sector commercial professional vocational educational institutions entertainment health services financial activities hospitals nursing homes and any place visited by the employee arising out of or during the course of employment including transportation provided by the employer for that journey so when she is traveling for example a bpo worker traveling back and forth from work the unorganized sector has been described as any workplace which means enterprise owned by individuals or self employed persons engaged in production and sale of goods providing services where there is less than 10 people less than 10 people so they have all been bunched into the un un uh, organized category now what is sexual harassment sexual harassment is includes any one or more of the following unwelcome acts of behavior whether directly or by implications which means they retain vishaka physical contacts advances demand or request for sexual favors making sexually colored remarks showing pornography any other unwelcome physical verbal non verbal conduct they have also added the following circumstances among other circumstances if they occur implied or explicit promise of preferential treatment in her employment for example you are making you are making these suggestions and you are implying that she will likely to get preferential treatment in her employment in her relation to work implied or explicit threat of detrimental treatment to her employment so she will be under detriment if she doesn't comply with the sexual favors implied or explicit threat about her present or future employment status interference with her work or creating an intimidating or offensive hostile work environment so creating an intimidating hostile work environment humiliating treatment likely to affect her health or safety
Now, how are you going to ensure it when you are talking about the act applying to the whole country and such diverse workplaces? How do you ensure this? So, what they continued to do was they took in the uh, mechanism of the internal committee which was available for the private sector and government employees and then they created two additional structures. For some workplaces, you have something called the internal complaints committee. So, every employer now has to comply and create an internal complaints committee. What is the job of this complaints committee? It is not just to deal with the complaint as it comes. First and foremost, the complaints committee is functioning for three years and their job first and foremost is prevention. The act lays down how they must prevent and these are mandatory now and that if, if there is a complaint, how do you redress that? The internal complaints committee has to be set up by every employer of a workplace by an order in writing. The internal complaints committee will have a woman at a senior level who will be the presiding officer. Secondly, she will have, uh, if there is no senior level employee, then the employer will have to find her from the other departments and ensure that the senior woman officer is the president or the presiding officer of this committee. Then at least two people preferably who have worked with women, who have worked on the cause of women, who have some experience in social work or who have legal knowledge should be there on the committee and there will be one member from the external NGO or a person who is familiar with the issues of sexual harassment. Now the reason why the uh, external uh, member is important is to uh, prevent the company from tampering or creating a situation where there is intimidation, where there is uh, coercion, so that the company is able to come to a conclusion whether there is this issue involves sexual harassment, if there is sexual harassment then what has to be done, how do you redress it, what are the preventive steps that are taken even before prevention starts, this is the job of the committee. Now the committee, there is a lot of onus put on the committee to function in a different way and it, the act clearly states how they should take in the complaints, who, who can come and complain, what they should do, it has all been laid down very systematically. Um, if, the, if any of them contravenes with any of the sections of this act, they can be uh, asked to leave the committee or they have abused the position. There are several reasons why you can be out of the committee. Now remember that this act had to deal with diverse workplaces. So how do you have a committee where uh, say a woman uh, today may not even know who her employer is or uh, she may be working as a um, uh, in a workplace where the, there is no committee or if it is the unorganized sector committee uh, unorganized sector so what they did was to uh, to uh, make sure that there is protection available to those in the unorganized sector there is going to be something called the local complaints committee which will be instituted at the collector level at the district strict level and there will be complaints committees formed where there will be a, a well-known uh, social worker or somebody working who will be who has worked on women's rights who will be the chairperson of the committee there will be a committee formed which is external now what will the external committee do it will take in uh, anywhere there where there is less than 10 people and the employer has not made the committee or the complaint is against the employer himself, then this local committee will come into being and the uh, woman is going to directly complain to this committee, which will again follow a certain procedure to comply with the requirements of the Act. Now, uh, often times when uh, there is a complaint, there is immediate fear that uh, 
uh, there is retaliation, there is uh, fear that uh, she may take ill, etc. So, um, this committee is also empowered to give interim reliefs uh, when she writes to the committee and she is, uh, uh, there are uh, several things that can be done. Uh, the local complaints committee will have a chairperson. There will be one member who is nominated from women working at the block or tehsil level. There will be uh, two members uh, who will work with NGOs who are familiar with the issue. Out of this, at least one person should be a lawyer and the other person should belong to the SCST community. And uh, there will be also a a social welfare department or uh, there'll be one person ex official member from the social de work department or the child development ministry who will work on the committee to ensure that the committee is actually functioning uh, when the aggrieved woman uh, complains to this committee she has to make it in writing if she is unable to do that then the committee will help her to put it down in writing there is however uh, a period of limitation that the complaint should be made within a period of three months. Now this, uh, this sort of limitation did, didn't exist in the Vishaka judgment and in fact uh, 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 complaints of sexual harassment usually uh, you will not immediately be able to complain because of several reasons which Anaga had mentioned about. In fact uh, the recent case of the law intern itself she complained after 10 months. So the uh, the limitation for the first time in that sense takes view from the Vishaka guidelines. Um, in fact, uh, here the complainant will complain herself. However, if she has any physical or mental disabilities, then there can be help taken from counselors, special educators, etc., who will complain on her behalf. Um, there is also a section where there will be uh, something called a conciliation, which means that the com internal committee or the local committee, before they start any inquiry, will at the request of the woman, at the request of the woman and not otherwise, ask her whether she wants to take steps to settle the matter. But this settlement cannot be a monetary settlement and it cannot be an oral settlement. This, or, this settlement will be actually reduced in writing and they will uh, uh, put down uh, what are the terms of these settlements, what actually transpired and send it to the employer and to the district level uh, officer. So it, this settlement will not be some secret document which will remain only with the employer but it will be sent to the district office. The reason for this is that often times when there are complaints, uh, there is immediate retaliation and she is forced to withdraw the complaints. Uh, all of us who have been on committees have experiences where she, uh, the committee themselves many, many times have threatened the woman and told them, you please withdraw the complaint before we even listen to you. So these kind of steps have been taken to ensure that there is no retaliation and they expect that the external committee member also ensures that there is no retaliation. At the same time, they are giving a way out of the situation if she wants or if both of them can uh, uh, arrive at a settlement where they feel that her conditions of work will not be hurt uh, and there is a procedure for conciliation. If there is conciliation, then the matter ends there. However, if the, there is no conciliation or if the person has agreed to conciliate and then gone back on the terms, then there is going to be a full-fledged inquiry. Now, a complaints committee, if there are service rules, then what it actually does is it substitutes the uh, normal domestic inquiry uh, because sexual harassment has become a, a misconduct at the workplace. So if that exists, then the normal uh, way in which the inquiry will proceed in a domestic inquiry, the procedure will be followed. Except that the committee will remain the same and the, uh, this committee will substitute and give the findings as if it was a domestic inquiry. When there is a normal misconduct, for example, somebody has come drunk on work or somebody has underperformed, etc., etc. Um, <coughs> uh, 
this committee will be able to enforce atten attendance of all persons they can call for all kinds of documents and they can they can have powers to uh, seek information which otherwise may not be possible uh, during pendency of the inquiry uh, the the internal committee has the right to recommend certain uh, uh, reliefs which means she can uh, if she is asked by the woman then she can transfer the woman or the respondent to any other place for example uh, there are situations when two people are working together and it is almost impossible after the complaint to work together so at, at the same time you need to work and carry on so what do you do so the interim relief could be that a separation of the two at that point where or changing shifts but that depends on whether the woman is asking for it so either the that usually normally the transfer happens to the woman but here the act specifically says that unless you ask for it you cannot be transferred and the, even the respondent can be transferred you can grant leave to the aggrieved woman for a period up to 3 months and this will be over and above the leave that she will get and any other uh, relief to the aggrieved woman as may be prescribed now uh, the rules which came out in last week they also prescribed they have added on to this interim relief which means that if the harasser is for example writing her confidential reports then he will stop doing that uh, uh, if for example it is a student it's a student and a teacher then that person who is accused of uh, sexual harassment cannot be correcting her marks etc so these are additional reliefs and the committee has the power to uh, hand uh, do these uh, measures to ease the situation for example there are committees who have basically changed the places where the two sit so these are things that you can do to immediately ease and that is the role of the committee to to there will be a situation which will be very divisive very difficult and you'll be functioning in a very high pressure situation and at that point if you can manage to diffuse the situation and the the act gives you the powers to do that now um this inquiry committee has to finish uh, their findings and they have to be giving the report in about 10 days time. If it is not proved, then they will re recommend to the employer and the district officer that no action is to supposed to be taken. If, if the sexual harassment is proved, then you can deduct uh, you can take action for sexual harassment as a misconduct in accordance with the service rules of the respondent. Where no such service rules have been made, then the, the new rules which are there prescribes warning, censure, even uh, counseling, community service. So there are penalties to sexual harassment which will have also termination. In addition to that, this act also provides for compensation. So though the responsibility of ensuring that uh, sexual harassment at the workplace act gets implemented and the onus is on the employer the compensation is collected not from the employer but from the harasser or the person who is the respondent and this is usually deducted from uh, depending upon there is a criteria of how compensation will be come to uh, the compensation will be determined by the mental trauma pain suffering loss of career opportunity medical expenses income and financial status of the respondent feasibility of such payment in an installment or a lump sum basis so you uh, there is for the first time there is actually a, a, an element of compensation and which is deducted from the person who is harassed <coughs> there is another section uh, section 14 in which if a complaint if a complaint is found to be malicious malicious uh, forged of where forged or misleading documents have been uh, added uh, then uh, uh, there is or you have given evidence which you know to be false then there will be action taken against you and this action however can be taken against you uh, uh, after a regular inquiry so the three criteria are it has to be malicious uh, 
it has to be evidence that you gave knowing it to be false or you've given forged or misleading documents not for any other situation for example what they have understood is that sexual harassment doesn't open the kind of the nature of the offense is that it doesn't happen in the open it happens in silence secrecy so how do you determine as a committee that what actually happened so it there are there, there are times when it becomes your word against mine and then how is this evidence weighed so uh, this committee is also supposed to function on the basis of principles of natural justice the way it is done in any other domestic inquiry and then the, there is a balance of probabilities what is what is what is her statement saying what are the circumstances so the committee will have to assess it and if it is not proved it doesn't mean it is false so this 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 difference has been made not proved does not equal false it will become false only if you can give a finding that it is malicious that means there is malice there is an intent there is wickedness there is some mischievous motive or somebody has willfully lied or you have produced forged documents or you have stated something which is knowingly uh, false other than that uh, there cannot be a punishment now uh, for many uh, who are here they want to know about what are the duties what does the act actually tell the employer to do uh, the employer shall provide a safe working environment at the workplace which shall include safety from parents uh, from persons coming into contact at the workplace display at a conspicuous place in the workplace the penal consequences of sexual harassment and the order constituting the internal committee under uh, section 4 now what they want the employer to do is Uh, the employer is not meant to be feeling scared about this act or feeling under siege the main thing is that they want the employer to take an active participation in prevention prevention is done and the criteria is laid down as to what are the steps that you will take in prevention you have to be saying up front at the workplace that there are certain behaviors x y z which will not be tolerated if it happens then this is the procedure we will follow and there are also penal provisions now what are these penal provisions um we've always had uh Uh, two sections that is section uh, 354 and 509 which means outraging the modesty of a woman 509 is uttering any word or making any gesture so word or gesture intended to insult the modesty of a woman which uh, uh, which has been amended and 354 which is uh, using um, uh, physical uh, uh, your touching and um, assault or use of criminal force to the woman with the intent to outrage her modesty so uh, what happened is following the uh, gang rape of december 16th and following justice verma's uh, recommendations and uh, many many years of experiences of dealing with sexual violence against women there was a whole body of work which was relied on all the sections related to women sexual violence got widened some of it got substituted and this happened following the uh, gang rape what changed was there were new provisions which were introduced relating to how the police should act if there are cognizable offenses there were new sections which were introduced for trafficking of children and women there were new sections which were introduced for uh, acid um, um, acid throwing which was not there before now these have all become part of uh, the penal provisions there are new provisions for stalking and voyeurism 
so these all these things have been introduced uh, keeping in mind the way violence against women has changed and the nature of this violence rape provisions got uh, changed and widened sexual harassment for the first time became uh, defined as an ipc section so there was a new section added called 354a where this uh, definition that i mentioned sexually colored remarks showing pornography unwelcome sexual conduct all that became part of the penal provisions and that means for the first time that uh, there is a there is another forum open for women to be complaining and there will be redressal so you can use the, the so there was a combination and the, what you see today in the different cases that are coming up is a result of the new amendments as well as the new changes which have happened the new changes in rape laws also changed keeping in mind the body of research which was presented where it was now made known that it was not just um, a penile penetration etc which needs to come under the rape sections but also insertions of objects into body parts and all other things which uh, came from the uh, cases that are live cases that are going on knowing very well that many of the cases against sexual on on sexual violence is against minors young people and cutting across classes caste gender etc so they were forced to make a lot lot of changes which uh, they have widened and increased the definitions they have uh, increased the penalties uh, the the imprisonment terms have increased and also the the, ra ra the rape laws have gone through ex uh, uh, many many changes so you have section 354 which is assault to use of criminal force to the woman with the intent to outrage her modesty here you have an imprisonment of 1 year which may extend to 5 years now remember that this section was already in existence and in fact in uh, other states like andhra pradesh tamil nadu etc they had already been amended and all these jail terms had been increased so what you have is now there is a um, Uh, over the over the board there has been an increase section 354a sexual harassment of the nature of unwelcome physical contacts and advances or the demand or request for sexual favor showing pornography imprisonment which may extend 3 years or fine or both so sexual harassment which is unwelcome in nature which includes physical contacts or pornography or request for sexual favors now is punishable up to 3 years with fine or both and they have become cognizable but bailable offenses now making sexually colored remarks will get an imprisonment which will extend up to 1 year or fine or both assault or use of criminal force to the woman with the intent to disrobe will get an imprisonment of 3 years but which may extend to 7 years with fine now all this was added along with voyeurism stalking trafficking of persons trafficking of more than one person trafficking of minors uh, medical treatment to rape victims exploitation of traffic child exploitation of traffic persons uh rape by a police officer public servant armed forces uh, people in management or the jail staff remand homes uh, homes people in custody of women and children's homes persons in management or staff of hospital rape committed by a person in posi in position of trust or authority towards a person rape by a near relative all these have come into the expanded version of rape um similarly there are amendments made in the indian evidence act also and today as far as penalties go if 
uh, if the employer has failed to uh, implement the provisions of the act, uh, failed to provide, failed to form the uh, complaints committee, not taken action if there is malicious complaints, or have not re reported, made periodic reports to the government as to what they are doing about the complaints committee, how many, how many meetings have they held, how have they handled the complaints committee, whether, uh, whether they have held training programs, whether they have conducted orientation programs for the complaints committee, all have that has been now made. Uh, there are penalties for that. The first penalty will go up to uh, 50,000 rupees and then subsequently it doubles and also there is one provision where if the if the employer is contravening or abetting in contraven, contravening the provisions of the act then uh, they, are, they they can even cancel licenses or withdrawal or non-renewal or approval of cancellation of registrations as the case may be and uh, this could affect how one carries on business activities. Um, the, uh, what the rules did was the rules sort of clarified further what this what is required for the employer and the employer has to ensure that there is yearly reporting of all the activities and they have to make an annual report of the number of complaints of sexual harassment received in the year, number of complaints disposed of during the year, number of cases pending for more than 90 days. 90 days is the time period that they require for your complaint to be handled by the ICC or the local complaints committee and number of workshops or awareness programs against sexual harassment carried and the nature of action which has been taken by the employer. So there is a mandatory reporting which will happen uh, according to the provisions of the Act.